right go to github.com ventoy slash ventoy enter click on releases right here on the side scroll down click on the ventoytor.gz finish for it to download then open up a terminal window cd into downloads like this and then this is going to be your file you will be extracting it using this command tar dash xf ventoy and then press tab cd ventoy then you're going to be running ventoy gui i'm going to be copying it here using control shift c type sudo dot slash control shift v enter it may grant you for a password just give it your normal system password on linux and you will have this nice ui and here you can pick your device you can install make sure to keep secure boot on because most modern systems have it on if your usb is not showing up just click show all devices and it should show up make sure that the usb does not have any sensitive information on it which you do not want to lose and then to get the iso you google Windows, you click on the link, then scroll down, click whatever product language, English. I don't, I don't know what you speak. All right, pick your own language. 64-bit. Your computer likely is not 32-bit. If uh, you don't know, just search up the model number of your CPU, and uh, you can tell. When downloading it, it might ask you where to download it, if you're using Firefox that is. You'll see a little Ventoy thing here, click on that, click save. If you're using Chrome, it'll put it, put it to the downloads folder and you can move it from the downloads folder to your USB. This is, this is what it looks like. You won't have as many ISOs as me because you're a normal person, but you can. You can have multiple ISOs. You can even have Linux ISOs and Windows ISOs. It's really cool. There is also a piece of software called Volvo USB, so if Ventoy doesn't work for you, you can just install it. The installation instructions are here. If your distro is not set to be here, you can install it from the source code. If you do have access to a Windows computer though, you can go to Microsoft's official website and you can use their Windows 10 installation media. Problem is that this breaks off the time. So, I'm going to be picking a more stable option. Press Control Shift I. Click these three dots. Go to More Tools. Click Network Conditions. Uncheck Use Browser Default. And you can pick anything. I'm just going to be an iPad. Then, restart the page. You can close this, and you can just get the ISO like this. Then you will go to rufus.ie, scroll down, click on the download link, run the exe, and then on device you will be picking your USB, and on boot selection you're going to be picking your ISO image. You'll be clicking select, going to downloads, and picking your ISO. On my case, I have not downloaded an ISO because I am recording a tutorial, not flashing an actual USB. And uh, everything else will be kept default. It is fine as it is. Click start, wait for it to finish, and done. If you're new to computers and still don't know what to do, basically you just made a bootable flash drive you're going to plug that into your computer, turn it off, then you're going to boot it up, then you're going to turn it on, but you're going to go to the boot selection manager. How do you do that? You Google your laptop's or your computer's motherboard's name, followed by boot selection key. That will very surely get you the key. Usually it is F11, F8, F1, something like that. Then you'll be granted by quite a few options. Pick your USB, boot into that. You'll be greeted by Ventoy. 
select your ISO on our case Windows then you'll be booted into the Windows installation screen click install click next a bunch of times and you could figure the rest out it's really very simple thank you you don't need to subscribe to this channel or like anything I just hope that it helped I don't really want to do this thing for the money oh yeah see ya I guess